Hi family, I hope you are good. I hope you are blessed. Um, we thank God for the gift of life. We thank God for today. Uh, he is God and He is good. Uh, today I just felt like I want to share something with you that has laid so many people astray, you know. And as I was thinking about it in in the on the road in a sense, like I was on the road when this came down to me, I actually wrote down what was coming, you know, uh, because it was just a lot that I was just hearing, you know, and I just typed in what is deliverance ministry, you know, and the Holy Spirit is in our lives to help us and in a sense, educate us. The same way a person needs to go to school for certain things, even in the kingdom of God, you need the Holy Spirit in order for you to be enabled of certain things that you, you know, you know, and I grew up as a child that that loved so much you know uh, the love grew big in christ but i've always been this person that loves so much that even when i was in class and i see a student struggling i was this kind and i can see that he want uh, he or she wants to copy i would open my book and the person would copy so much that even if it meant me because i'm a first writer even if it meant me uh, rewriting a statement that I, I can see that you copied, you know, I'll just twist my words in order for it not to look that way. You know, I, I used to open my book, like seriously, that if you have a problem, you copy because, um, copy and paste is totally between, uh, that particular student. As I was, I was thinking about this, I actually put it down, uh, because copy and paste is between that student and the teacher, right? I, I made sure I extend grace to any student that would copy from my book by changing because I, I'm that fast. <laughs> you see, fast in thinking, fast in writing, fast. I'm, I, I've always been like that. Uh, I'm observant, you see. I will go even extra mile less to change my own answers so that the student can have these freely you know and as i was writing this memory down uh it's actually my 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 diary uh, that i wrote this little thing down it was done to me what is deliverance ministry there are people that even out of their own goodness doing good will do good bluntly not knowing that um, you are, you, in a sense, your help is influencing others to do wrong. A ministry formed, what is deliverance uh, ministry? This is what came to me, you see. And this is my opinion. This is what I've observed. This is what I've learned. This is what I've, my experience taught me. That a deliverance ministry is a ministry fo formed by false prophets to lure you into deep deception of no return. Uh, a ministry formed worldly from d demonic doctrines to make you depend on humans. The real deliverance ministry is a ministry formed for the love of a lost soul to be led to their great deliverer of all sins, which is Christ Jesus. I just put it like that. All these other deliverance ministries that you will see for me... There are people that God greatly uses, you see. Listen to their statement. Don't misquote me. There are people, there are servants of God that God greatly uses in order for people to be delivered. Uh, but that is not ministry. Okay, why is Portia saying that? Why are you saying Deliverance ministries are ministries formed by false prophets in order to, 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 to lure you into a deep end. 
né? It's a ministry that has been formed from demonic doctrines in order to make you dependent on a human being. A true deliverance ministry, meaning a true deliverance preaching, a true de deliverance teaching as to, to lure you and direct you to the great deliverer, I man Jesus. We are coming to why I'm saying all that. I'm going to go to... In fact, before I even remind you of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, fivefold ministry. Some he gave to be apostles, others teachers, others evangelists, others uh, prophets. You see, none deliver. Right? Some he gave to be apostles, some he gave to be pastors, some he gave to be teachers, some he gave to be evangelists some prophets none deliver right this is the deliverer himself you know this is uh you remember what the scripture says in the book of uh, i think psalm 18 you know our god the rock our rock you know our fortress let me remind you our deliverer you know let me remind you of a scripture in the book of Ephesians, uh, of, 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 um, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust my shield and the, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. The Lord is my rock and my fortress. And my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. God has always been the deliverer of his people. From Old Testament to uh, New Testament, God is the deliverer. Jesus is the deliverer of men from sin. So you cannot be in the same rank as Jesus. You are called to be a prophet. You are called to be a pastor. You are called into an office that only God can use you to either direct people to the deliverer, which is Jesus Christ. There are people that are being used for people to be delivered from sin, for people to be, li to, to be de delivered from bondages. It's not ministry. It's not a calling. It's God at work. And when God does it, God does it to glorify himself for his own purpose. And God throughout the Bible has never repeated a miracle. So there is no need for me to open a deliverance school. There is no need for me to open a deliverance whatever. God will use me the way he uses me. Deliverance is to direct people to the deliverer. Right. Now, the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, heal the sick. God will use any gift to heal the sick. Right. God says raise the dead. Right. People are spiritually dead. God will use many to be spiritually alive, to, to preach this, for people to repent, people to be converted, and the dead will be risen. And God will use people in a, at a point of death. People will be raised. God is still doing that which he said he, we, he, we, we must do through him. You know, heal the sick. He said, heal the sick. Raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy. You have been given an assignment. Drive out demons, cast out demons. God is going to use you in your gift to cast out demons. He's not saying, I'm calling you into ministry to cast out demons. He said, do it. You are a delivered person that God is going to use you in order for people to be delivered of demons, but it's not ministry. God says, freely you have received and freely you give. 
but didn't say for a one on a one and a uh um uh, 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 for you to be totally delivered of this you need to plant this in order for this to happen god doesn't work like that that is human mind that is a doctrine from nowhere from we know where if it's not coming from the the kingdom of light it's coming somewhere if it's not in the word it's coming somewhere and it's the world it's opposite of light so basically what i'm saying Many deliverance ministries were formed in order to make you dependent on a human being. Because now a human being has become a mediator between you and Jesus, your deliverer. Ministries that have turned people to become lazy lazy of praying lazy of reading the word lazy of meditate to meditate the word if you go to the hebrew word the real meaning of meditate it means to say it out in silence you know it means you have to say the word throughout the day in silence to yourself you are ministering to yourself your heart it is planted in your heart it will come out you know and your word, my God is my rock, my God is my fortress, my God is my deliverer. The word says you are my rock, the word says you are my fortress, the word says you are my deliverer. The word doesn't say you are going to use who who to deliver me. The word doesn't say who 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 pastor, who who prophetess, who who prophet, who who is my deliverer. You get my point. God is using people. And the other thing that confuses people so much is they will think that a certain prophetess or a prophet is the one mainly called for a certain purpose of deliverance. That's where mistakes is. God can use a teacher of the word to convey a message that brings deliverance in the heart of a person and God delivers a person. She, God can use an evangelist to preach a message that brings repentance into the heart of a person or any bondage and a person is delivered by God through that person right down. God can use uh, an apostle to, to, to preach a message that brings nothing else but deliverance into the situation of a person, but it's not ministry. Why? Because God can use anybody for it. That is why it's not deliverance. God can use Posha Muhammad to understand the demons that is behind people. And Posha Muhammad will be here preaching the word, nothing else but the word of God. And the warning and the sounding of the word and exposing of evil as according to Ephesians. And somebody will be delivered. Why? God used that in order for a person to be delivered, but it's not deliverance ministry. So people confuse it so much that uh, everybody that will come will be like, I need deliverance. I need deliverance. You need Jesus. Somebody that has been delivered of sin telling you that I need deliverance. That means this person cannot meditate scripture in order to do a self-deliverance of a certain particular problem. You see, and if you fail to do that, you see, the disciples tried to cast out a demon that was stubborn and couldn't come out. And Jesus said, this one comes out by prayer and fasting. Jesus didn't say, no, this one specifically needs me. She, Jesus said it needs prayer and fasting. It means you need to be a person that is immensely into the word of God in a way that nobody can understand. Can God use people in order for de deliverance to occur? Yes, 100%. God is using people. I, I read messages, but it, it, do we say deliverance ministry? No. Because the only ministry we know is the gospel ministry. Because in the gospel ministry, people get delivered. You see, an evangelist can preach 
and through that evangelist deliverance happen you don't have to call it a deliverance ministry prophetic ministry no i know the gospel ministry you see yes people see it differently people understand it differently god calls people in a different way but these are some of the things that people have forgotten he said freely given and freely freely you shall give the bible says jesus christ prayed you know bought with the precious blood of jesus Somebody already bought me and I'm here selling things to people. Somebody bought me with his precious blood freely. You know, I paid him nothing for him to do that. And then I am here selling it to people. Do not depend on deliverance ministry. No matter how powerful a person is being used for people to be delivered. You see, uh, you, 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 you are making a mistake of focusing on the fact that I need to come to a certain person for deliver. If God wants you to be delivered from whatever it is that you may need deliverance from using anybody, God will do it. Have I seen people being delivered through me? Yes, I have. Is it me doing it? No, it's what the gospel is the God in me. But is it a ministry? No. Which ministry are you called into? Because, it, yes, in Christ, you know, the body of Christ, there are different ministries, but it's not in the Word. The ministry I'm called to, you know, that I need to hold firm to, that, you know, I, I, I need to serve faithfully and loyally, you know, Truthfully so, is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. So don't get confused. This is just the part where I want us to get more deeper into understanding ministry of deliverance. That we now, we want to do so much from it. And a lot of people are, are driven astray because of confusion. It produces lazy Christians. It produces Christians that come with expectancy of a shrine. Because you go to church expecting to be delivered of a problem that you, you may be battling with. You don't even bring it to God. You, you, you don't even go to church. You don't even go to see a man of God or woman of God to hear the gospel being preached. You are expecting him to deliver you from that. Because it's a deliverance ministry. You don't take a, the first part of a sermon that you probably preaches. You go straight, shoot, I am waiting for him to say, can I prophesy? There's going to be deliverance here today. Am I called in, in that? Yes. But is it deliverance ministry? No. A prophet, prophetess, you are called to prophesy, affirming and confirming the word of God that has been spoken. You understand? It's a very complex thing that a lot of people don't understand. Yes, a prophetess and a prophet can be given a, a word of wisdom. But all has to be word-centered. Because what delivers us? The message of Jesus, the message of the cross, it is all about what he has done. It took God throughout the lives of the Israelites, delivering his people. So a lot of people were driven astray because of seeking Sangomas in a modern way. You see, a Sangoma, I'll always say this, does not play this is who I am. And this is who I am. A Sangoma says Sangoma. You see? So there are Sangomas behind the pulpit. And they have sat and grow, grew fat in the, the ways. Conniving, deceitful ways of how do we extract money from people. And that's, that's doom 
for the false prophet. God uses us in different ways in order for people to be delivered from whatever they may be facing. But don't go with to it, saying, no, that one spe specializes in deliverance. Yes, God can use people to specialize in that for sure. You know, but it's not the, the reason Jesus died. For you to have, you know, look around. You know what they have. Deliverance ministry. You know, it's, it's, it's not how it's portrayed. There are men greatly used by God for people to find deliverance through them. A deliverance is Jesus. It's not man. One of the reasons I was afraid and didn't really want to come out and it's because I didn't want people to see me as a vessel that is being used to deliver people from, because I'm not. I only preached the gospel that delivered me, you see, and God has enabled me to see people being delivered through prayer, people being delivered through this, but it's not an office. It's not an office. It's just the work of God in the body of Christ. It's not what you need to go even to church thinking about. Go heal the sick. Cast out demons. You are going to cast out demons. You are not going to sit one place waiting to be casting out demons. In the process of you preaching the gospel, the Holy, you are empowered with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will enable you to do that which he said you will do. We have been empowered to do things that the world will look at and see God, not ourselves. What is deliverance ministry? It is the benefit of the body of Christ that we get in Christ being empowered by his spirit to do things that brings the world to a standstill and see that God is indeed God. It is not a ministry then to make you grow big in bank balances. It is not a way for you to make people dependent on you. It is for you to make people know God. You don't cast demons out because you did anything. You cast demons out for people to focus on that which gave you power to be able to cast out demons. It is not to glorify yourself. It is not to make money out of it, but it is for the glory of God. A lot of deliverance ministries has caused chaos. Not that God is not using men and women for people to be delivered through them. Empowered by the Spirit of God. I leave that. But it is not an office. It is part of the gifts that we get from Christ. He is still the deliverer even today. The pastor is not the deliverer. 
Portia Mao is not a deliverer. Prophetess Huhu is not a deliverer. Prophet Huhu is not a deliverer. Evangelist Huhu is not the deliverer. Jesus is. The deliverer of men from sin and bondage. From darkness to light. The deliverer of any kind of stronghold. And it shouldn't be about us. It shouldn't be to direct people to us. It shouldn't be God of Poshamha. Deliverance was not a set of a gift that, uh, yeah, I will give you a gift of, there are people that are great intercessors that are anointed and are being used to pray and things happen. There are worshipers that will stand worship and people will be healed. But there is no worshiping ministry. You see, and worshiping ministry that will make people now focus on. No. Gifts shouldn't make us want to grow fat. The real people that God wants to use for his assignment are even afraid to come out and say, you know, I'm called to be that. Ordained in whatever people just don't want anymore because of the counterfeit and the ways of doing it. Don't remove Jesus from the set of everything because he is the founder. Are you gifted in do you see God deliver people in your direction through the the Holy Spirit, Spirit, through the work of Jesus, it's not you. Don't turn it into now, since I see God is working through me to deliver people, uh, I'm going to open a school of deliverance. I'm going to, you're a great intercessor. And you hear yourself in a corner speaking to God in a language that the devil cannot understand. I know I'm going to open a school of. No. It is always the gospel. The gospel. Paul could have opened deliverance ministries. So many churches he planted continued to preach Christ Jesus crucified the man Jesus crucified him alone and nothing else even if an angel comes and preaches another gospel let him be accursed we preach nothing else but Christ crucified in him he, on their way healing people doing all this it was Christ not saying there are no ministries of deliverance that are doing wonders by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying what is deliverance ministries? What, what are we doing as a body of Christ with a gift that we have received and we see the, the hand of God working through us? Do you pray for somebody and the person is released from any bondage and then you turn that into a prophet uh, call, a prophet call, a prophet, okay, a prophet call, okay, this is what I'm going to turn it. I'll just put the word ministry into it and I know it's going to work. I'm not saying men of God don't need your blessings. I'm not saying that. But what has happened 
but deliverance. There's broad minds of Christians that are lazy to even read the word. They, somebody would not be able to meditate. Lord, you said this in the book of Psalms. Lord, you said this. Lord, you said this. Before you even come to a pastor and say, Pastor, I tried. You know, one of the greatest messages that I get and I feel that it is time for intervention is when somebody says, I've prayed, I've fasted, I'm not able. You see, then you are able to work with that person to go to the root cause of why I've prayed, why I've fasted, yet I'm not being delivered of this. Because demons cannot be bigger than prayers. Demons cannot be bigger than the word of God. Demons cannot be bigger than anything that God said you must do. Do not cease to pray. Meditate on my word. There's no way it's not a weapon. So where is the problem? And God spirit will speak and say oh yes stand with her in prayer hold hands pray together and God will use your presence for people to be delivered in the way in way, whichever way God wants but it's not a ministry or a call that should make people do what's happening. It's not a copy and paste. Pastor, who, who is doing it like this? Don't copy and paste it. If maybe the spirit has ministered to him that, okay, you focus on ministry, or, 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 on deliverance because I've called you for people to come through you, you know, to come to Jesus directed by you. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to heal them, you know, uh, cast out demons in them using you as a, you know, a, a point of contact between them and their sickness. And then you hold them, point of contact. Here's Jesus. Fine. But how are you doing it? For who are you doing it? Who are you glorifying? It's a very sensitive. You know, to deliver, I don't know. It's a very big subject that I'm going to get into and i'm going i'm not going to say it like a theology a theologian i'm not going to say it like a bible scholar i'm not going to say it like a like a no i'm not going to say it like a an azarine i'm not going to say it like anything i'm going to say it exactly how it is being ministered to me that yes but all this is for what edify the church Are you being used for that? Yes. Believe. God gave gifts to edify the church, not to bankrupt the church. Not to, 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 to produce independence syndrome. Spiritual independence syndrome. Spiritual independence syndrome on human beings. No Jesus, no Jesus, no Jesus. We are going to enter and talk about deliverance ministry. In a way that is God still using people for that? Yes, I believe. seen God do it till today I do it's not an office 
can be found in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. It's an act of God using his vessel to do something. Not for you. Because, you see, for you to have that call as a prophet, prophetess, it was, he's the one. Isn't that it's Jesus? The same man on the cross? Remember it? Man who was on the cross? Yeah. Him, the founder, the head of the church. That same man is the one who called you to be a prophet and a prophetess. So basically, you are all about him, to preach him, whatever he is doing through you, in order for people to know him, not you. There are people who say, I got delivered from my pastor. Who, 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 who. People, people even say that. I need a man of God who will deliver me. I, I know, Pastor. No. The servant, Posham, how is, 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 yeah, deliverance. God uses her mightily. A person will not even say, I know. Uh, have, you, have you ever studied the book of Romans? Uh, 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 have you studied, have you heard what the Bible says in Psalm uh, 18, have you heard what God says in way, way, way? Have you, uh, there is no let's go into the word first. It's that pastor, that pastor. You know why man has focused so much in his own problems and forgot to focus on the author and the finish of their faith. Anyway, this is just part one of deliverance ministry we are going to see just how much people get deceived in this deliverance ministries and it's one of the i'm not saying this as a person that god is not using in that department he is he's using me but it is not me and for me that's why i don't even talk about what he does because if i do that now i'm bringing attention to myself which is very, very dangerous. And it's, it, it's, it's going to draw me and my focus to the world. You see? And a lot of men that lost it and women that lost it, they lost it because now they focused on what God was doing through them and failed to focus on him. You see? They focused on what God, the gifts God gave them and failed to focus on God himself. And that's when the enemy comes in. You know, somebody that is truly gifted by God, anointed by God for a certain purpose and fails. Because you lost focus. You lost focusing on him that needs to be focused on. You know, you you know, if pastors, prophets, evangelists, teachers, if apostles can learn to teach their church not to focus on them and learn to ask somebody that comes, Pastor, I think I need deliverance. Before you say it, let the spirit confirm it in, uh, to your pastor. You see, let the Spirit of God confirm what you need. One, two, and you, you before, pastor, I need, I think, no, in my walk of salvation, I may not be walking well. Please help me, assist me, because I, I, I pray for this. This is not, no, I think I need deliverance. Did you try first to, to fast and pray about it? Because Jesus says these kinds of demons need prayer and fasting. Did it fail there so that when we bring it to, to pass that I have this problem that I've been praying about? Pastor, I need deliverance. You can't say I need deliverance before using the same weapon Jesus gave you that your pastor will also be using. Anyway, it's just the beginning of the what is deliverance ministry. And we're going to see how many were deceived. How were you deceived? Because of deliverance ministry, prophetic ministry. You understand? And then become, because God is using you there, of course. But then, 
the prophetic ministry grows big in church. And then after that, the gospel goes Ichabod. Holy Spirit goes Ichabod. And now we have to bring in something in order for us to be sustained in what we, we, we founded our church on. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Heavenly Father. You are God, God. There is none like you. You alone are God. There can never be one like you. Heavenly Father, we have seen all. We have seen all these demigods. We have seen all these idols. No deity can be brought before you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for being our God. We thank you for being our Father. We thank you, Lord, that before the foundation of everything, you had a divine plan to reveal yourself to us through your son, Christ Jesus. We thank you, God, for the Lord Jesus. Without him, where would we be? The apostle Paul says, it is no longer us who live, but Christ lives in us. The apostle Paul says, when it pleased God, he revealed his son of love to us. Thank you, God, for Jesus. Lord, we believe Jesus is Lord. Lord, we believe that everything was created for him and by him. Lord, we believe that everything as it stands was Framed by your word. Lord, we believe that you are the only true living God. And founded everything, Lord, from the beginning. Lord, we thank you for that. You loved us that much. Heavenly Father, we love you. For you first loved us. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. A spirit of truth. He continuously works in us. Lord, thank you that he enables us to focus on that which is more important. We thank you also for our gifts. We thank you for empowering us by your spirit to be able to do that which leaves the world amazed. Father, we thank you. For your word. We thank you God. For the sword of the spirit. Lord we thank you that. We feel you. We feel your presence. Even in your word. We hear you. And that is. Being empowered by your spirit. Who reveals your mysteries to us. We thank you God. That the gospel is, is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved. It is your power, Lord. Lord, we thank you for opportunities that you give us. Enable us to preach this beautiful good news. God, may your gifts that you have deposited in us. Work to edify the church, not self. Every ministry that is being formed, may it never be to glorify self. May it never be to enlarge anybody's territory, but to bring extension to the kingdom of the Lord. Father God, may you open our eyes to see that whatever you are doing through us, is for your glory in the name of Jesus. In everything, O oh God, may your spirit teach us to be humble. Even in the greatness of anointing that you have deposited in us. May we continue to be humble, Baba. Help us, O oh God, to love like you. Even the worst of worst sinners. Even the worst of our enemies. May we learn to love you, Lord. Because the Bible says you demonstrated your love for us. For while we were sinners, Christ died for us. 
The Bible says you are love. The Bible says how would we love you if we do not love the brother that we see? Father, help us to love one another. Help us to show grace to one another. Help us to be patient with another. Help us to be gentle with one another. Father, we also pray for ministers that are, are losing the mark because of what they have in them. Remind them that it all starts in being humble. Humble your people. God, by your spirit. The Bible says, Humble thyself before the sight of the Lord. He alone will lift you up. Help us to humble ourselves so that we don't find ourselves in situation where we have to buy being lifted up from dark kingdoms, trading in our souls in the name of Jesus. Father God, may you take your glory, Lord. Father God, this night, may you take your glory. Father God, may people go back to the word. May people preach nothing else but Christ crucified. The very essence of the existence of the church. In Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord. Lord, glorify yourself. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Hi, family. I love you. God loves you more. Ish. But we are healing because God is good. Uh, stay blessed. Um, God willing, we will go live. But ish. we are still trying to heal. Uh, the reason it's prolonging it because they had to cut, cut. You know, they, they had to cut. Um, a lot of places because it might, yeah, let's not even dwell on it because it will feel important. <laughs> I love you. God loves you most. Stay blessed.